Okay, right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Christopher Lavelle. I'm the post sales manager and training specialist here at Dow Technology. Um, you can see my LinkedIn details are on the screen there. I do encourage everybody to follow me for my product demonstrations and my uh, product testing and your webinar uh, certifications and things like this. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you through our thermal monitoring solution uh, using access control. And then, of course, uh, from here, then uh, opposed to Simon's one earlier on today, then, of course, I will show, show you a more in-depth technical knowledge. OK, so let's take a look. Okay, guys, so for, for the next um, 30, 40, 50 minutes or so, then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit more familiar with the actual equipment within itself, some knowledge of the actual configuration, and then, of course, understanding where it should be used, how it should be used, and then, of course, obviously, reaching the benefits. Lots of people would have probably joined me on the body temperature me measurement solution using thermal imaging camera and a black body box. But in this case here, now what we're going to do is we're going to comply all of that equipment into the thermal imaging access control panel. Okay. Okay, so the overview and scenarios, guys. So now lots of people have have already got the body temperature measurement solution incorporated in thermal imaging camera and a black body box, and they are possibly going up to like four meters, three meters, scanning multiple people. Now, of course, obviously, th this type of equipment is designed for specific applications, you know, like entrance areas, single single person scanning only. However, though, um, where we're going, you know, next to the stage two, then of course, we believe that you know after you've actually purchased a access control unit that incorporates face recognition and thermal imaging this is the type of in type of device that that would never be uninstalled the body temperature measurement solution some people have said that after COVID-19 is in fact actually over lockdown is released possibly we actually have a cure then of course would you ever need that technology after well you know that's an open question mark however though, when it comes down to access control incorporate in both face recognition and thermal imaging then of course we see this as a device that why would you ever uninstall this regardless to what's happening out there regarding the spread so of course we already know that it will be used for factories educations we have already been selling this technology we already know it's been deployed in hospitals and of course in industries food processing package delivery so of course uh, you uh, have to see well, where this is going to go because this could in fact actually be the complete game changer that you've been looking for for a very long time OK, now we, of course, obviously have various products. We now, in fact, actually have uh, the turnstile. We did have a turnstile before. However, though, we've increased it. We've bettered it. We've uh, made it a different design. So we have a, a new version of our turnstile. And then, of course, we have various uh, versions of the access access control modules itself. So if I just go on to the next one. So on the left hand side of me here, let's just get this window going here. On the left hand side of me here then of course we actually have the floor standing model so of course on this one here then of course it's already designed to the specific heights that we need and then of course it already has the access control panel and thermal imaging camera installed now on this one here you know it is obviously a metal unit with a weight on the top so it has securing bolts on the bottom to be able to go to to and into the floor and then of course it is ready to go and ready to deploy some people using this design have already changed their approach of what they would use with the product and activated our latest firmware where you can just turn it into a thermal monitoring access control device which means no more face recognition no more access control with normally open normally closed you know the wigan and you know opening the door or not opening the door with the specific firmware you can actually just tell this device to monitor somebody's temperature and of course, obviously, if every th everybody's OK, then proceed on. And if there's not OK, then of course, the alarm will go off. So of course, this is becoming a very popular unit just for that reason alone. Then, of course, we have the wall mount. So of course, this is, in fact, actually the wall mount version. So of course, this is the wall mount. Then, of course, on the actual back here, there is a single bracket. It secures to the wall. And then, of course, it goes into the actual thermal camera here. And as you can see, the actual side or size of the device, it is very good. It is secure. It is a tough device. And then, of course, the actual product itself, very ruggedized, very reliable, and, of course, a very well-built device. The turnstile and the actual desk mount will be a variation of so of course they're nice and easy devices guys what you do is you have 
your devices in question, you have your thermal imaging camera, they come on their, their turnstile mount, they come on their desk mount, then of course you build it all together using the instructions, using the guide from the, the book, and then of course from there, then of course you would have any one of these products nice and easy. They do vary between the two, so of course like on these ones here, then of course we have the RFID readers, so of course we can use the card, uh, we can use a card on this one as well. Uh, the turnstile one, that wouldn't have a card reader because the turnstile itself has a card reader. So, of course, they, there are slight variations between the devices, but, of course, obviously, very good and reliable also. And let's get that camera out of the way for a second. Okay, now, this is, this is the tricky part. So, when it comes down to the technology of this device, then of course we are incorporating once again the 0.3 of a degree accuracy. Now, of course, immediately whenever people see that, they they're going to sit there thinking, well, hold on, comparing that to the actual body temperature measure solution, how do you emphatically achieve a 0.3 of degree ac accuracy without a black body box? So how can you do this without any point of reference within the thermal view? Well, that's where it all comes down to close proximity. The body temperature measurement solution has any working accuracy on a five series camera between maybe uh, two meters to seven meters now this device is designed for single person close proximity so of course you are looking for anywhere between 30 centimeters to 80 centimeters at that type of range we can in fact actually still achieve the exact same accuracy. Lots of people will question it, of course, you're right to question a, a device like that. However, though, in the same institute that we tested over in China for the body temperature me measurement solution, we did the same again for this solution, okay? It's, we've already received our certification, our testing is sound, and then, of course, our thermal imaging down to the 0 0.3 of degree, we are accurate also, okay? Okay, now when it comes down to the thermal solution, then of course we have to consider that these are standalone devices. They are all standalone devices. Okay, now when it comes down to the actual standalone, then of course you configure this with device and it works independently within itself. However, if we were to use DSS Express, then of course DSS Express can be a the video management solution to in fact actually power all of these devices. If I was to be able to do face recognition of 10 people and I was to put it into my floor standing device here, technically speaking, I would have to then go take those same 10 people and go program that into my wall mount version. However, though, if I started with DSS Express being the boss of the solution, then of course they would have been able to put the 10 faces that I need into DSS Express. And then of course it would have told all of these devices what to do and when to behave and how to behave whenever somebody wants to gain entrance into the building or possibly not. Okay, so DSS Express will be a very good valuable tool in this solution. On the actual DSX Express, it's gonna be a very simple, plain and easy notification. These are just a couple of images that I did earlier on today. Tyler's there as well. And of course, I was using a cup against my head full of hot water. And then of course, you can see that I've actually triggered the alarm. So of course, there's 45 people that came into this building today. 42 of them had normal temperature and three of them were high whenever I was testing with the cup. That is a plain and very simple, easy solution to see. You can connect DSS Express to multiple devices on the thermal imaging access control. And of course, with that said, you can monitor many of them. And then of course, you know, with this type of solution, just like any other, you know, we don't need to do anything if the temperature is okay. No different than body temperature measurement. If, if it's okay for you to go in, then go in. But if it's not okay, then of course, the alarm will go off and furthermore, DSS Express will trigger a, a pop-up window in the event that the temperature is too high, somebody's temperature is too high, and of course they have triggered the alarm. I have a page here ready. Let's see if it's still ready. On the actual software, let me just drag this over here. On the actual software, under DowSecurity.com, where you go to the download center, click on softwares, DSS Express, you can actually see that it says DSS Express to Mac. To Mac stands for Thermal Monitoring Access Control. Okay, let me get this back out of the way. Okay, now, 
If you were to invest in our turnstile solution, as an engineer after 17 years, I haven't done that much work with turnstiles. Uh, I was more of a Campbell guy myself. However, though, I have worked with some turnstiles. I believe after comparing the turnstiles to the ones that I've seen in my past experience, this would probably be the most unique and stylish design of turnstiles that I've ever seen. It comes with brushless technology, so you never hear you know, those doors opening, those creaky gears. It will never happen with this type of technology. And of course, it is very, very feature rich. We have very various variations of the device coming out further on in a year. And then, of course, they're just going to keep on getting more intelligent. You know, we're going to have to consider that while lockdown could, in fact, actually be released in a week, two weeks, three weeks, we don't know. But then, of course, you know, things like social distancing and flow control, well, that's easily going to go on for maybe half a year, a year, maybe another whole year more. Now, when it comes down to the turnstile, then, of course, you can actually use this for a very valuable application for the control of the people into the building so of course you've got the actual face recognition being relayed off of the access control thermal imaging then of course the actual turnstile itself very reliable brushless technology good build on the device on each side one side has 10 IRs to go across the actual grid in the event that you're breaking the actual IR. So of course, like they have top, middle, and bottom. So of course, if you have a suitcase or if your child is with you, then of course the barriers will not close on them because all IRs have not been released yet. Okay, uh, we have footage here of people getting caught their backpacks in the London Underground, and of course, obviously the actual trawling tra um, suitcase being snatched up by a barrier. That won't happen with this because security is high. And of course, if you're still in the way of one of those IRs, it won't close. OK, when it comes down to the expandable technology, of course, uh, in this case here, then, of course, you've got a left side, you've got a right side and then you have a middle. Well, of course, you can just keep on purchasing multiple middles. And of course, you can have 30 of these things if you wanted to. And of course, just connect the uplink and then, of course, the technology will take care of itself. And of course, when it comes down to elegance, guys, uh, it's over here. It's in our office for anybody that is going to meet with us um, through your sales rep. In this particular case, it is a very well built, shiny device, so very feature rich. Now, our access control thermal imaging, uh, all of them, every single one of them, doesn't matter about the actual variation. They have been designed to comply with all third party technologies because we are incorporating multiple normally open, normally closed within the actual device. Now, of course, uh, I don't know of too many turnstiles, you know, except for the ones I've worked on, but I am more than confident that nearly every single turnstile has a third party spare normally open, normally closed ready for such a solution meaning that of course you can in fact actually get this type of design get our turnstile pendant mount so of course it just sits on top all you have to do is do maybe like a, a 22 millimeter drill hole in the top just for the actual cables and then three other holes just for the actual screwing and secure in place and then after that incorporate normally open normally closed this technology will work with every turnstile it will work with all of them just simply because everybody has that spare capacity okay now, of course, if you were to incorporate the VTH solution, which is this, this is this is our VTH solution monitor. So, of course, if you were to incorporate this, then, of course, what you can do is you can go straight from the actual access control thermal imaging to this device here. And then, of course, it will relay what you need to see, possibly in a reception or maybe a concierge service. Because th this device here, our v v uh, VTH on our own version or our slightly adjusted version of Android, then, of course, on here we can see the face. We can see the live view from the device. We can see their temperature. We can see if they're wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. So, of course, this is a very simple and easy verification solution to make sure that everything is the way that you hope it to be. Uh, this can be connected via the LAN cable. This can be connected to the LAN cable, or you could wireless both of those. And then, of course, you can see the accuracy and, of course, see the attendance of the people coming in. For your model numbers, guys, there, you, I don't know if you want to take a picture of the screen, but there they are all there. That is our equipment function list. So, of course, you have the models between uh, the uh, standard model, wall mount, for example. Then, of course, you've got the desktop mount, standing mount, and then, of course, software DSS Express. You will find that freely available on the Dow Security website. That is our model numbers, guys, for if you want to place your purchases. 
if you wish for a turnstile or the actual VTH for the uh, for the live view, then of course uh, there are, are model numbers now. I believe uh, all of this equipment, obviously turnstile would have to be ordered, uh, but I believe all of this equipment will soon be very available for everyone. And these ones, these are already here now. This is already here now. Okay. Okay, guys, so insulation. So I've got a couple of things here. Now, of course, on the actual wall side of things, then, of course, wall mount, of course, obviously, you would have to be, uh, you you can install the actual device, and, of course, it would have, have no problem. So, of course, what you would have to consider, it is not a PoE device. So, of course, you will need either one or two network cables, provided how you want to connect, and, of course, a 12-volt power supply, okay? For the actual floor stand, well, that's all already done. And then, of course, the actual mounting brackets for the floor stand go rather downward or out the back I, either one for the actual floor standing mount bracket if you had maybe let's say a uh, floor socket box then you can mount it on top of it and then of course go straight down and of course make it look a nice easily installation but of course obviously on the actual floor standing you do need to secure to the floor uh, you know it is a metal object with height and of course the weight is at the top so of course for security it's best that you secure down and then of course within itself you know it's not actually a heavy device you know it's not too heavy so of course uh, i think it would be easy to have this installed in any one location turnstiles of course they are a little bit you know a little bit more fabrication needed however those same principles and of course third parties well once again that is just incorporating normally open normally closed so of course in this case here we're talking about network cable 12 volts and of course i guess two cool okay Couple of insulation uh, requirements there, guys, um, in the bottom right corner. I don't know if you want to take a picture of that, but that is just if you want to import data, possibly using the USB interface or maybe using uh, smart uh, DSS Express. But then, of course, there are a couple of uh, installation procedures. The majority of people here will be installers, cause considering this is the technical one. And then, of course, uh, there is a specific height. I believe we are going for 1.4 meters in height. Uh, I believe this isn't probably actually far from it. And then, of course, we do have to consider, you know, uh, possibly shorter people. So, of course, now the technology isn't, in fact, actually designed for children. You know, this is for the commercial application to be able to allow people into the building or not. But then, of course, technically speaking, at the same time, if you, in fact, actually had it on a low elevation and you set it to thermal mode only, then, of course, if a human came into the field of view, then, of course, it would scan a child, too. And then, of course, verify if their heat was OK. So technically speaking, you could do this. However, though, where we in fact actually had the differential on the body temperature measurement, where we had like a 40 degree snap angle of your face, this one here, we really do want that one degree. You know, you really looking into the lens, the actual camera will, or the device, should I say, will actually ask you to rather step closer or look this way because it really wants to get that accuracy of the actual thermal imaging to ensure that you go in. So this this product will allow those side on views, you know, or you walking at speed with a complete 90 degree right angle to the device. This one, you look right at it. And then of course the thermal device will take over. And then of course, if everything is good between face recognition and thermal imaging, then of course the door will open or possibly not if you're not feeling unwell. Now, Coming on to the actual th thermal side of things, guys, in this particular case, you know, that looks like a very simplistic slide. However, they're probably the most important one on here because we are talking about a thermal imaging device as well as an optical lens. You will, of course, have to take the environment into account. So, of course, like on an optical lens, then, of course, it's no different than a conventional camera. We should not install this type of technology directly opposite a window because in this case here, there will be a large bright light outside. Your face will be right next to the actual lens. So it will turn you very dark, no different than a conventional camera. So, of course, you will have to consider the environment. The technology within itself is not suitable to be installed outside because we are using thermal imaging. So, of course, if you have a large amount of airflow between yourself and possibly the 80 centimeters you're given allowance to, to your face, then, of course, a large amount of airflow will, in fact, actually interrupt the thermal accuracy. And in this case here, we're all about the quality of service. So, of course, it would not be suitable there. Then, of course, at the same time, ambient temperatures within the view within the field of view if you have this device in direct sunlight then of course obviously that will create a problem for the thermal imaging camera no different than if you had a large open concierge service or reception like in this building furthermore where downstairs is just a whole bank full of glass 
Well, in this case here, well, that wouldn't be suitable either. So, of course, in this case here, you do have to, in fact, actually think about where you're going to put your device. Commonly speaking, from all of the ones that we've done, and we've done lots of these already, it's normally slightly inside the entrance, maybe about one or two meters away from the actual front door. And then, of course, we've li linked it to possibly the, the mag contact or the stripe lock. We've already done that. But however, though, we have made sure that, of course, the environment like lighting conditions and sunlight and airflow is taking into account. Not as much with body temperature measurement. However, though, we're still keeping it in mind. OK. OK, guys, so just a just couple of um, slides here regarding the actual uh, installation. And then, of course, I'm going to show you a couple of videos. And on this type of platform, I'll just probably just pause the video every now and then. And then, of course, speak about what I see just to let the uh, buffer catch up. OK, so uh, installation, guys. So, of course, uh, you will be when you get the device, there will be no password. There's no whole admin admin anymore. You will, of course, obviously be required to set a password. And I do recommend that you use the email facility to unlock your device if needs must. Then, of course, you will have your network connections where you will be able to do your 192168. And then, of course, you may notice that there are two LAN cards in this device. So all of them, all of them, in fact, actually have a one gigabit LAN card and a one 100 megabit per second LAN card. There's not too much demand to, to in fact, actually connect to at one gigabit per second just yet. However, though, for future expansion, maybe that will be required later on. OK, then, of course, later on today, I'm going to show you videos on all of this on later on. Then, of course, you're going to be able to use the user group to be able to create users. And then, of course, that's where it will, it will incorporate the face recognition. OK. Then, of course, you can have a various different unlock modes. So, of course, under the actual unlock mode, then, of course, uh, Right here, you can have the unlock mode where you can use combinations, and that will be like uh, maybe it's going to be your face and the actual RFID, so that's combination mode, or you can just have the or, so as opposed to and, it could be or, and then of course it would just be your face, or it could be the actual RFID, or it could in fact actually be a number sequence also. Then, of course, unlock by period. You can only uh, unlock it by, based on a particular time. Group combination, meaning that there uh, could be more than one of you. And then, of course, a temperature monitoring mode only. Now, be, av be aware, guys, only on the latest firmware versions does it actually say temperature monitoring mode only. OK, that is not baseline at this time. I suspect that in the future it certainly will be baseline. However, though, all of the units that I've used recently, I have upgraded to that. Um, you will see my email address and my contact details at the end of this webinar. For anybody that wants that firmware to be able to turn all of their thermal monitoring access control devices into a body temperature measurement device, then, of course, just get in contact with me. I will provide the firmware, no problem. OK, guys, so here comes some videos. And of course, I will just I will do some pauses uh, frequently just so then that way I can let this platform catch up. OK. OK. OK, now I've just gone, gone ahead and put in the actual username and password. I, I picked something e easy, you know, uh, admin and one, two, three, I think. Uh, and then, of course, I'm entering the uh, the password, the email address. Sorry. Now, do keep with that, guys, because like uh, in this case here, you know, we do have, you know, things like the actual tamper buttons to completely factory default the device in the event that is rep pressed repeatedly. However, though, also at the same time is that if you get unlocked out of your device, you can just simply use your mobile app to go into the reset device section, scan the actual QR code on the actual screen, and then, of course, unlock your device. So do still continue to use the email address facility. OK. Let's carry on. Is that better, Andy? Good. OK. Device initialized, right. OK. That should be that done and that should go away. Good. OK, guys, it may, it may jump through the actual webinar. I'll just pause it, pause it frequently and just have a quick chat about what, what the video is put in purpose for anyway. OK, let's proceed.
Okay, so this one is going to be network connectivity, guys. Okay, so I'll pause it right there. So immediately you can see that, of course, you've got a 100 megabit per second card so and a 1 gigabit per second card. Now, there's one thing to know about this. Uh, one thing that I've been using the 1 gigabit per second card for is that this technology, when using the manual add on a network video recorder, you can add the actual live view, the actual optical camera into a network video recorder. You won't get anything like the clever stuff, like the overlay or anything like that. However, though, you can per permanently record the live video stream from the optical lens on this device into a network video recorder. We may do something clever with overlays later on. However, though, you can do that right now. So, of course, that does give you ammunition to use a one gig LAN card on such a small device because then you can use a network video recorder to record its live view. Let's not forget that some of these devices are, are installed looking at the general entrance error, general entrance area. So technically speaking, you've also got an IP camera from this device also. You may notice that this device is P2P compatible, and yes, it is. If you install the actual mobile phone, install the mobile app using P2P, putting in the actual serial number, you can connect directly to this device. And then, of course, what you can do is if I bring my webcam over, if you use the new app, make sure it's the new app of DMSS, that will be this one here, guys, with the blue icon. If you use DMSS, and then, of course, you use the P2P feature, you can get a push notification to this, from this, in the event that the temperature is too high. Okay. Let's carry on. Go away. There we go. I'll get ready, pause that. All right, okay. That, that video shot stopped quickly. All right, okay. And also, the, just the last part of that video that just you know, disappeared really good quickly is that the actual device is wireless as well. All of these devices are wireless. The wall mount, the, the desk mount, the floor stand version, they are all wireless also, okay? So basically, thinking you've actually got three NIC cards in one device. Okay, right, let's add a user, I believe. Okay, oh, sorry. That's my mistake that time, sorry. Okay, now. When it comes down to adding a new user, then of course uh, you can use the actual user ID, that, that makes it nice and easy. Name, of course, obviously, because that will go to software. Then of course your actual face that you can scan, password also, and then of course the user level. Now, of course, the user level, user level is in fact actually quite useful because if it's a user, then of course they can't make you know administrative changes. However, though, if it is an administrator, then of course when you want to access the control panel, you can literally say, control panel and then of course it comes up with admin pin so password you can just literally click on admin then of course it will scan your face and of course you know if you're a administrator and of course it picks up the correct face recognition then of course the features will be completely unlocked ready for you to make modifications so of course if you're one of the administrators for this device literally looking at it your face is the key okay well I'll just continue here Streaming okay, Andy? Okay, now there's the actual face recognition um, profile there, guys. As you can see, that there is a stencil that your face needs to be in. And of course, obviously, if it captures you too early, if you if you don't like the picture that is taken of you, then of course, you can just press record again. And of course, let the face recognition kick in again. And of course, it will take a better image of you or another image, should we say. Okay, I think that's that bit done. Good. Okay, so I've I've added myself into the actual system, and then of course I walk by, and then of course it's done. Now the technology also, 
incorporate in face recognition the technology has the ability to know if your mask is on or off okay now of course you can do this as a couple of ways but uh, in some of our applications here now that this product has been purchased for some solutions have required that of course you must wear your mask at all times and of course you know it's not down to the actual employer that's going to get in trouble it's more like the the employee sorry the employee it's more going to be the employer that gets in trouble in the event that something happens and of course his uh, staff were not wearing his masks this technology can in fact actually tell them that they can see whenever a mask is being worn and not being worn and then of course once again even with your mask on we can still capture enough of the face to be able to generate a good face recognition image okay let me show you Okay, face parameters. Okay, now, providing that the video is all caught up, then of course what we what we have here is that we have under the face parameters mode, we also have mask, mask mode. And on the mask mode, if it says no detect, then of course it, it would be, you know, it doesn't care if you're wearing, wearing a mask or not. However, if it's a mask, mask reminder, it will open up the gate better providing that your temperature is okay and your face recognition is okay. But then of course it will tell you to please put on your mask. If it says mask intercept, then of course in this particular case, it will take your temperature, it will comply with the face recognition, it will find out if you're wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, and if there, if you are not wearing a mask, it will not open up the barrier. So in this particular case, it will remain shut until you in fact put your mask on and rescan yourself again. Okay. Okay, hopefully everything continues to stream just fine, guys. Right, and then this one is a very useful feature. I will just pause that at the right time if I can. There we go. And then, of course, in this case here, under the unlock mode, we have combination settings. Okay, so it's the aspect of the and or or. So, of course, if it's a and, then of course it must be your face and possibly your RFID, or maybe it's your face and your password, for example. Uh, in this case here, the, I know that it says, you know, fingerprint there. However, though, we'd have to change that later on because uh, shout out for this type of technology, there is no biometrics here. Um, they probably do actually have fingerprint because you could possibly connect it via the Wigan or the RS-485. However, nevertheless, is that for these devices here and now, there's no biometric technology because obviously that requires a touch. That means it could in fact actually continue to spread. So of course, the, what we are going for here is complete Contact contactless. Okay, you don't need to touch anything here. Possibly the screen if you do a pin code, but once again, you know that is kind of like a preference, if anything. So I believe I've actually done face and password, but let's just see. I think I'm on the and. Yep. So I've now gone and done face recognition, and I've done a password. So let's see if that works. Right, so it's detected me. One, two, three, four, and done. Okay, so after I had the combination of my face and my unique password, then of course all was good, gate was open. Okay. Okay, and then finally, very quickly, guys, um, that when incorporating that new firmware version for thermal monitoring mode only, then of course it takes no more than a few seconds to activate. You log into the device, click on system, unlock mode, and then right there at the bottom it says temp monitoring mode only. Lots of people will in fact actually be put in a position that which one is going to be suitable for their application. Do we need a thermal imaging camera with a black body box? Do we need multiple cameras for human detection for flow control? Or do we need thermal monitoring access control where they can in fact actually open up the doors or possibly forget all of that, forget face recognition and just use it as a thermal monitoring solution to ensure that all of the people that are in the building are actually okay to be in the building. Okay. Once activated, all other 
processes and privileges are deactivated and ignored. And of course, it just focuses on temperature, like that one, 36.2. Okay, good. Okay, so then of course there is just a small access control, uh, kind of like a, a cheat sheet there, guys, a couple of uh, selections of what, what you need to do. So of course, uh, set the actual admin password, set the email address, that was a de definite network communication, three LAN cards, your choice. Uh, I can see in the questions here, guys, that uh, uh, Tom, yes, it is definitely wireless. Uh, the whole solution to Mac is completely wireless. And then of course, uh, user management, uh, thousands of users you can put into this uh, solution and then of course obviously incorporating DSX Express then of course you can configure multiple users uh, simultaneously then of course access rights um, based on the time and of course how you're going to get into the building and various different unlock methods and then of course back to this VTH device uh, I think this one guys this is a uh, this one really is for that reception and concierge service however though of course we've got to uh, we've got to be realistic the, there's a high probability that the majority of people in this webinar are installers system integrators then of course you know DSS Express it could be overkill possibly possibly not but then of course if you're talking about regular common administrative end users then of course that is possibly going to be well above their head maybe they only in fact actually have one of these then of course incorporating the actual vth you can just get this get it in a little stand put it on the actual desk you can put the actual bracket put it on the wall if you need to and then of course just watch then of course just watch and of course if there's anybody that's in the building that shouldn't be then of course it's going to flag up red the alarm's going to go off and then of course that you know well presented person could just stand up and say sorry can i have a moment of your time the VTH is a very simple solution device. Uh, as you can see here, then of course you just add the actual device, put in the IP details for your TMAC device, and of course immediately you can unlock the door. You can in fact actually have two-way communication, confirm that you know the actual mask is on, and of course mo most importantly, confirm that that temperature is okay. You can get this right now, guys. Of course, in this case here for those end users, those receptionists. This is going to be the most easiest device to, go, to, to deploy. Okay, I think that's about our side of it, guys. So, of course, uh, let's just get over to uh, Q&A. So, just, uh, just a reminder, guys, um, please follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, I do product videos, demonstrations, product testings. Um, all of our dates for our future webinars are always on my LinkedIn account, always. And then, of course, with that said, then, of course, I can keep you up to speed very, very easily. Now, we are going to open up the door, I believe, for 15 questions um, because of, with the limited time that we have. And then, of course, with that said, if anybody has any further information, that is my email address and that is the contact number for this office. So let me just start with a couple of questions here, guys. Right, okay then, so this one up here. So, okay, so so the 10 Mac device can be connected to the network wirelessly. Yeah, that was Tom, we saw it, Tom, good. Right, if I pair with the VTH monitor, how would I find out who has triggered, right? Um, who has triggered the alarm. Now, Andy, do you recall, I think this also does the actual face recognition relay data from here to here, yeah? Uh, right, okay, that one was, uh, who was that for? Uh, Alan, uh, in this case, uh, Alan, the uh, face recognition metadata, name, details, so, on, so forth, that also comes over to the actual VTH as well. If it says Chris here, it says Chris here, okay? Hopefully that answered that, Alan, let me know otherwise. Right, okay, and right, so uh, Lee, is there a notification to the mobile app if the power of the unit is disconnected? Uh, yes, um, on the mobile app, so that was for Lee. Uh, Lee, um, D DMSS, one of the more common regular type of alarms is things like IPC disconnect or network device offline. So of course, if any one of this technology was to no longer be communicative with the P2P server, the alarm will go off and say it say your device is offline okay right okay uh hopefully we got that one sorted let me know otherwise right lee uh scott can i send an email when activated it is just a standalone system connected to the wan uh i do believe that this has email facility 
let me let me just check check that one, Scott. Um, I'll, I'll come back to you on that one in a second. I didn't think to look up uh, SMTP on this, but I'll check that in a second. Okay. And can can you connect multiple to the term? Right. So uh, so that one was from J Jason. Hello, Jason. Jason King Lost. <laughs> well, okay. Then. So in this case here, uh, Mr. Jason. Uh, then of course, um, at this moment, right on today's day, it's one of these and one of these, and possibly later on, then of course it will be one of these and multiple one of these devices. However, though, we realistically see it that if this is in fact actually for the concierge or the reception area, then of course, if you had one of these at the front of the building and then the other one at the back of the building to receive the notification wouldn't be as useful if it's a, in a completely different location to where you are, okay? However, a valid question, but like uh, I think later on, it will do multiple devices. Okay, any others? Right. Okay, guys. Uh, any questions for me? Any others? Uh, let me just answer that one from Dave. There. Uh, can user pictures be imported from existing databases? Um, Dave, it can be imported. You know, using DSS Express or USB interface into the device. Uh, however, though, from other databases, though. That, of course, obviously will need some work because we would have to be careful with uh, the DPA and the GDPR there on how these two devices are communicating between each other, especially with databases. But if you had a collage of images and, of course, you happen to know their name, then DSS Express and USB interface will be able to do that uh, very, very uh, simply. Okay. Uh, let me just ask that Scott one, Scott Wheeler. Yeah, I know Scott. Uh, can we also run a report on standalone? Uh, Scott, yes, definitely. Uh, I was checking out the actual extension for that today. You can run a report in DSS Express confirming all of the actual temperature readings of any one people in the building for the day, the week, the year, the month, all of that to in fact actually confirm that everybody that came into your building was actually okay to do that. Okay. Uh, here comes Jason again now. Right. <laughs> Got all the other ways. Okay, Jason, your multiple questions, I will come back to you later on. It's, it's always Jason. Right. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, now that is a good question uh, regarding uh, Keith there. So, of course, how would the system operate uh, if the person, uh, Muslimic, or is wearing a face or, you know, other religious clothing? Uh, right, okay, so that is a good question there. Now, um, going t taking face recognition to a technical level, go, te technical level guys, uh, we consider that uh, our technology has 256 aptitudes within the face that we, go we gather using face recognition. So if you were to be able to cover one half of your face, then of course that would still relieve, uh, remain 125 aptitudes that we can use to scan to be able to better the face recognition system. So of course with 125, 128 face recognition parameters, that is enough for us to be able to ge generate a confirmation that it is the person that you're looking for. There could be some obstacles if it is covering a lot of your face, However, though, you know, the technology within itself has been designed to allow people in even wearing masks for the COVID-19. And, you know, that's already covering 50% of your face right there. Uh, hopefully that helps. And, and uh, Clifford, absolutely, mate, you can install this on a network video recorder. What's that? Right, okay. Uh, you can install this on a network video recorder. Go to the manual ad, put in the IP address of this, the optical view you will see on a network video recorder. Okay. Let, let me just read this. Uh, last one, guys. Last one. Let me just read this one from Alan. It's a bit of a reader, though. Uh, I am just using it for temperature monitoring on the faces uh, imported and reception. No monitoring real time, and there's a way to tell them trigger the alarm. Uh, in this instance, um, Alan, you are 100% right. Uh, if you're just going to be using it for a thermal monitoring device, then of course you've got this device here, or of course you've got DSS Express for the actual visual verification notification of high temperature. Okay, no face recognition, no access control. Don't worry about it. Just turn it into that particular mode, and then of course go from there. 
Okay, right, okay. So, so a bit a bit of information. Um, Andy's off to the left hand side of the actual camera there. As far as I know, this webinar is actually downloadable after. Is that right, Andy? Yeah, and then of course a link gets posted out to the email address that actually got you here today. And then of course there are a couple of uh, things. Uh, we of course obviously are still running our vigorous training courses. So of course the DHSA is still continuing. Make sure you follow me on my LinkedIn. I will post up those dates. And I think uh, maybe uh, next week, uh, possibly the week after, uh, but possibly next week, uh, we will be doing the DHSP, which means that where I would pretend that you're actually in this room with me, then of course I will be tra training everybody to in fact actually work with artificial intelligence, AMPR, and remote monitoring. Okay, okay, guys, just uh, uh, 10 seconds of your time, just give us a bit of shout out. Has this actually been uh, useful? Has, anybody, has everybody uh, found this uh, uh, ideal and uh, helpful to better themselves and for proceeding on? Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. Perfect, Clifford. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent, guys. Okay, guys. Excellent feedback. Thanks very much. Okay, then. Well, you know, we're not going to stop doing this. We're just going to keep on going on for more products and products. And of course, um, some will probably be involved in the actual sales aspect, and I will continue doing technical. So I do hope uh, everybody has had a good day. And of course, obviously, have a good evening. And of course, obviously, keep safe. So, okay, guys, we'll close it out for now. Uh, all the best, yeah?